machine shop. The machine shop housed all of the skilled workers, equipment, um, machines that they needed to repair or replace anything in the ship except gun parts. You're welcome to take photos through the doors if you'd like. Um, the machine. Um, you can't go in, just look in. Yeah, we'll just stay in this space here. Um, the machine shop, the machine shop is at the gravitational center of the ship. So <laughs> my, uh, my son just graduated. Uh... This scuttle that you see here is called an escape trunk. It originates about 10 meters down, about 30 feet. Um, at the bottom of the engine room and fire rooms. All of these have an, all of the, these spaces have an escape trunk. If a fire broke out in, t in one of those spaces, all the sailors would load up inside of the escape trunk. It's, it's quite large inside and there is an emergency, emergency lighting inside there. Um, but they would load inside, but they would lead, leave this gutter closed. Um, the last man in would be the senior man on watch. He would close the door, secure it down tight, and he'd yell, last man in. Once he said that, they know that they can open this escape trunk, or this uh, scuttle here, and escape up to Broadway. All right? It can open? It can open. I, I've never opened it, and I don't know if it's safe. It's very heavy. Can we try it? Can we try it? Um, <laughs> please speak. Uh, yeah, the end of the week. So. <laughs> Maybe they secured it. Mm -hmm. For, I think one, a friend of mine, she did open one one time because there's more, um, yeah. and it, she dropped it on her foot, and she had to have it. Yeah, I know. Well, well, I think so scary. Not go into so scary to look at in the bar. No, no. Yeah. A young will not fall through. No. <laughs> <laughs> so remember, I talked. I told you all about that splinter deck, almost one meter of void space. Behind Roman here is. A stair or ladder rungs here that leads to that splinter deck. Besides being a space that would disperse the shrapnel laterally, it could also be an escape hatch. Hmm. So, this there's no emergency. Fire room four, engine room four. We're going to go inside fire room four and engine room four. Um, you'll see that this does have a mirrored look. Um, you, you folks are welcome to move around and take pictures within this compartment. It does have a mirrored look. stands for? Nope. Can you see okay, John? Um, AFFF stands for Aqueous Film Forming Foam. Come on over here. You need me to position you, John? <laughs> um, AFFF, Aqueous Film Forming Foam. They would mix 4% of a special solution with 96% seawater, and it creates a foam that's used to put out fires that cannot be put out with water. Hmm fire or um, fuel oil chemical those kinds of fires anything that you see with the red and green stripe you know that it has to do with the AFFF system all right and then the third type of fire suppression is called halon does anybody know what halon gas is did you get a photo so this is this is the halon activation station halon is a gas that suppresses the oxygen in this space 
if they were going to set that off, they would set off an alarm, alert the crew that they need to vacate the space because you and I need oxygen. Um, then that would they would release that. They don't like to use halon anymore. It's very bad for the environment, and it takes forever to clear those spaces of halon. All right. We're going to head into it. Does anybody have questions about any of the emergency equipment in Broadway? Was there a special fire department crew on ship? Um, they did have fire, yeah, special like damage control people, yeah. I don't know if they were in the exact fire department, but I mean, two, I, but the, most of the time they have two jobs, yeah. Yeah. One regular and one special. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. So we're going to go inside the fire room. Um, we're going to go. you John I apologize um, so this is uh, one of our boilers and this is fire room four um, inside fire room four are two of these boilers there's this one here and a mirror image of one on the other side so there's two boilers in each fire room eight boilers total these boilers are M type Babcock Wilcox engines and you can see here that they were um, installed in 1942 you're welcome to step up and take a photo um, these are three stories tall um, this ship was actually built around these boilers. Um, these boilers burn fuel to create heat to make steam. Um, they use Bunker C fuel, which is a thick crude type oil. Um, but when they modernized the ship in the middle of the 80s, they changed it to use diesel fuel marine. The Missouri could carry two and a half million gallons of fuel. Me gallons? Yep. Team of Uli Deck. Oh. Three, two and a half million gallons of fuel. 10 million yeah. liters. 10 million liters? Yeah, wow. Wow. Um, so the steam that was made in here was 850 degree, Eight. 600 PSI superheated dry steam. That dry steam was then sent to the engine rooms where it went through high and low pressure turbines to give the ship propulsion and then was also sent through generators to create electricity. And I'll explain how all of that works when we get to the engine room. Um, these boilers have to use very, very clean water, no minerals, ultra pure fresh water. So they would pump seawater onto the ship to uh, three, one of three desalinization plants called evaporators. This is the steam cycle. I'll explain how this works. Um, the evaporators can make 10,000 gallons of ultra pure fresh water every day. 80% of that is sent through, um, I'm sorry, 100,000 gallons of ultra pure fresh water every day. 80% of that is sent through the boilers. The other 20% was used for the crew, but it had to go through an additional process to make it consumable. Mm -hmm. So that ultra pure fresh water would be sent through a feed pump, which is that center thing over there. And then it is fed into the firebox, which is this structure here. Inside the firebox are pipes that are like in the letter M. That is why it's called an M-type boiler. Inside the firebox, it creates a saturated steam, a very wet steam, what you would have coming out of your tea kettle. That saturated steam is gathered in the steam drum, which is one deck up, and then it is transferred to the superheater, which is over here. Inside the superheater, it increases the temperature to 850 degrees, making 600 PSI superheated dry steam. That superheated dry steam is then sent to the engine room where it's diverted, goes through the ship service turbo generators, making electricity through the high and low pressure turbines, and then through this reduction gear, giving it the torque needed to spin the screws. And we'll see all of that when we go to the engine room. Oh, no, no, no silliness. Any unused yeah. steam is sent through the turbine. condenser, turned back into water, and then recycled well, through the system. Too long. But what is this I yellow part? Um, this oh, anything yeah. that's yellow has to yes. do with fuel. Fuel. Yeah. Oh, so that's the, yeah. All right. So. Oh, it's dingen. Eight. Eight boilers. Eight boilers total. Yeah, but the eight super steamers and eight. Yeah. Eight systems. Yeah. Back up. So if they were going to oh, light this, um, the light off process is a very dangerous and intricate process. And when they did that light off process, they had to have a watch officer or a, and a safety observer present for that. Um, but before they would light it. They actually had to inspect this. They used a lighted periscope called a BID, a boiler inspection device. They would stick that inside, look around, look for anything that would prevent the, the, uh, super, the firebox from functioning properly. Um, if they needed to clean it, excuse me here. If they needed to clean it, they would send sailors in 
to uh, clean, and it would look something like this. Uh -huh. Wow. But once it was cleaned and inspected, um, then they had to uh, purge the system with 15 minutes of compressed air. Yeah. Where's the hole that they go in? I don't. Oh, the hole for to light it? No, for them. In. To go in. Oh, maybe they. I take think in the back. Yeah. The back. yeah. yeah. So, uh, but when it was ready, after they cleaned, inspected, purged it with the compressed air, then they would prepare the torch. Now, let me back up a minute. It would take three hours for this boil, these boilers to make usable steam, but it took 10 to 11 hours to get these engineering systems up and ready to go. So if they needed to leave at 9 a.m. tomorrow, they had to start this whole process at 10 or 11 o'clock tonight. Mm -hmm. All right, cleaned, inspected, purged, they would get ready for the, the light off, okay? First they would do, excuse me, they would prepare this torch, all right? This torch would have a rag wrapped around the end of it. They would dip it in whatever fuel they were using, light it with their trusty Zippo lighter. They'd have the fuel on, and then they would insert the torch here. Once this was all the way inserted, then they would count one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000. If the, if the burner didn't light within three seconds, they had to remove the torch, turn off the fuel, start the process all over again. There's, there's sight glasses so they could see if it lights. Once burner number one was lit, they could transfer the torch internally to mm -hmm. burners numbers two, three, four, and five. Four multiply five. Five, and then eight. And then eight. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my goodness. You, you so, can make a light inside that you can look. So, uh, and then they really <laughs> had to monitor things. Once the boiler was lit, they had to monitor the color of the smoke coming from the stacks. The goal was to have clear smoke, kind of like a wavy, transparent smoke. If they had white smoke or black smoke, it indicated an improper air fuel mixture. Black smoke, too much fuel. These handles controlled the amount of fuel. White smoke, too much air. These are all air dampers. This was the hottest room in the ship. It got up to a 125 Fahrenheit, oh. which is 52 degrees so Celsius. Um, but when they air conditioned the ship in the modernization, they piped cool air from the air conditioned spaces mm. above, and then the temperature fell to only 32 to 48. Yeah, but it was Celsius. the last couple of years, but in the beginning it was 52 in the war. Yeah. Do you all have any questions? And then, and then everyone has the. So, so, so you would have to adjust the fuel. And air individually for yeah, each. Yeah, yeah. I think based it, on the color of yeah. 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 I'm wow. not. I'm not sure how that process happens. Uh, I mean, they're watching. No way. Oh, yeah. Now to watch the color of the smoke leaving the stacks, they could either use these periscopes, oh, which don't you work anymore, or there would be a man, a snipe on the on the superstructure, and he would be watching the color of the smoke, and he could communicate that color down to the the fire rooms here. Fifty two degrees. Then you have to work in the dark. By 40, you burn, you burn, you burn your... What about unions? <laughs> I, I do know that they had they had four to five hour shifts. Yeah, I'm right. still. Yeah, right. Five minutes is all. All right. If you want any fo last photos, go. check man station. Anytime the boilers were running, this had to be manned by the check man. He used these valves, he opened and closed valves to control how much water was gathered in this steam drum. This is where that saturated steam was collected. Um, he would watch the, these had like little bubbles in them, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, so the goal was to keep it as close to N or neutral as possible. If it fell or rose more than six or seven inches, they would have to shut off the boilers. Um, it's super delicate because if they had too much water gathered in the steam drum, they would have to transfer that water, or they, they could possibly transfer that water to the dry pipes, and it could, <coughs> excuse me, damage the dry pipes. If there was too little water in the steam drum, it would cause the steam drum to overheat and could dam damage the steam drum. Do you see the, uh, the direction, 600 yeah, yeah, yeah. auxiliary steam? Do you know how you find 
a leak in that kind of steam? Nope. They had a whole bunch of wooden broom handles. If they suspected that there was a leak, they would pass the broom handle in the passageway. Is that the broom handle? If it yeah, cut, how the, how the, if how it cut the broom uh, handle uh, in half. An extra about an extra. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Just go through the middle. Move. Yep, exactly. Box, you know? Follow me right this way. I did it on the stream, and I also got in. So, what's that on board? 500 kilometers. All right, so we're going to go down this ladder into, we're going to finish in this cool space, but right now we're going to go down the ladder into the fire room. Yeah. Um, there's a steep ladder. There is a low area, so kind of lean your head forward as you go down. And then when you get to the bottom of the ladder, there's one more step behind you, so please be careful of that, okay? steam if they needed to. That high pressure steam would first enter the high pressure turbine here, spinning blades at thousands of RPMs, and then it would cross over with that low pressure crossover to the low pressure turbine, spinning blades at thousands of RPMs. The low pressure turbine squeezed any energy left over in that steam. Um, and then those RPMs would be transferred to the reduction box. This is a reduction box underneath your feet, this big gray box. That would slow it down, 23 to one ratio, give it the torque needed to spin the 20 ton screws. Now if they were, yeah, gearbox, exactly. Um, if they needed to go forward, or I, let me back up. If they were going to go forward, they would use both high and low pressure turbines. Together, they could produce 53,000 shaft horsepower of forward propulsion. 53,000 shaft uh, 53, horsepower. 53, 53, 53, 53. Um, of shaft horsepower, forward propulsion. Um, so 212,000 shaft horsepower total in this ship. Oh, but multiply it, four. By four, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. However, if they were going to go like backwards, it? backwards is called a stern, then they would send the steam through the low pressure turbine only. Inside the low pressure turbine are special, uh, special blades for Astern propulsion. One of these can produce 11,000 shaft horsepower of Astern propulsion, so the ship has 44,000 sha shaft oh, horsepower. Right. So did the blade turn? I don't know exactly must, how that worked. Um, they must I, have changed pitch then. If there's yeah, I'm not 100. Pitch, uh, Either that or, or maybe maybe it goes in in a different, different direction. direction yeah. yeah, I'm not 100% sure. So follow me down here. Um, you folks saw that bridge uh, yep. when you were on your captain's yep. tour. The captain would send the speed orders down here. They would re they would let them know that they received those. They would be the RPMs that the captain wanted to go. He would always send the information down oh, in no, RPMs. Um, and then there's a table here that shows if you wanted to go 130 RPMs, that's 22 and a half knots. Our ship could go. 33 knots, which is 40 miles an hour, 61 kilometers per hour land speed. Um, so anyway, they would never give RPMs 999. These are special orders if they were going to go in or out of port. Um, but it would be an RPM. So once the speed orders were received, they would come to this wheel. They would turn this wheel. By turning the wheel, it opens valves. The more valves that are open, the more steam that's let in and the more steam that's let in the faster they could go and then they would monitor those rpms here but if they were going to go astern so backwards they would make sure these were closed and then they'd come to this wheel opening it the same way all right um so um again four four fire rooms four engine rooms this is kind of a layout of how the ship is is built um the blue 
rectangle is Broadway, and as you can see, there's fire rooms and engine rooms all the way down Broadway. Um, the longest shaft, these shafts are 0.78 meters in diameter. So, eh? 0.78 foot off the Yeah, two and a half feet. I don't have it all memorized, so I'm going to, yeah, right, two, point se I'm sorry, 0.76. 0.76 meters in diameter. Um, the longest shaft is 100, 103 meters. Just a sec, let me make sure. 103.6 meters, which is 340 feet. Um, the shortest shaft comes from this engine room and it is uh, 54.5 meters. 100 meter, Os, from a meter dick, kaas recht. So, yeah, so, and then, and then you can see that there are four screws. One, what let me, let me let them discuss it. <laughs> yeah, six, seven, six, Listen, let me do this. Oh, I'm okay. As long as, if, as they, long know as it. they know it already. Okay, perfect. Um, <laughs> so you can see though that there are two five blade screws and yeah. two four blade screws. Yes. These five blade screws are 5.33 5 meters in diameter. And these four blade screws are 5.4 meters in diameter. Yes. 20 tons. And you can see, this is what they look like while in dry dock. Do you all have any questions about any of that? You're welcome to look at it. Um, but they're brass. They're bronze. Yeah, they are bronze screws. Um, if the fire room is the hottest room, this is the loudest room. Go ahead and step in there, Jan. Jan? Who's Jan? Oh, Jan, I'm sorry. Step in there. That's a soundproof booth. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, interesting. Louder. Does it get quieter? Yeah, you, you can speak there. Yeah. I think all wives <laughs> need one of these. Yes. <laughs> all men. All men need one. No, 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 no. Wives. Keep, keep talking. <laughs> when they go on a take. Yeah. are you married? Yes. How long have you been married? Five years. You're very young looking. No, thank you. I'm very old. <laughs>
on the third, fourth deck down all the way forward of the ship. But this is for the five inch guns. That's the secondary battery. And the next room is for the 16 inch guns um, or the primary battery. And what you see here are computers. Now these computers are electromechanical analog computers. These are 20s technology built in the 1930s, installed in the 1940s. And when the ship was modernized in the middle of the 80s, they decided that these worked just fine. So they did use these computers all the way through the first Persian Gulf War. So the way this works is there are gun directors. The gun directors are manned positions higher up on the superstructure. Um, those are manned positions with gunnery radars and optical range finding systems that gather information about the target. Information like wind speed, wind direction, direction and speed of the target, direction and speed of our ship. All of the variables are sent down through these barrel switches you see behind me. When the information is received, they turn the barrel switches. That sends the information to the computers. The computers calculate the variables and then send messages to the motors in the gun mounts for how to train and elevate the guns toward their target. Um, I, so it is not true. It is true. Possible. It is true. It is possible. You know so, what I mean? I can't do it. So these, uh, these, this is the Mark One A fire control computer. But as you see, there are no triggers on this computer. The triggers are here. This is the Mark 41 stable element. Inside is a gyroscope. Uh -huh. The far left trigger is just a signal that sends out an alarm saying the guns are ready to be fired. The far right trigger is the hand firing squeeze boom. The middle trigger is automatic. When they squeeze that, it delays the firing a half a second to two seconds until the um, gyroscope inside indicates that the ship has returned to level, more accuracy in firing. They would use this one if they were on calm seas or if their target were close, if they were on rough seas or if their target were farther away and accuracy was more important, then they would use that, that automatic trigger. Do you all have any questions? But if you, if you, hear, you also hear the gun or not? Um, I think you would feel a shudder, but keep in mind you're under six inches of, or 15 yeah. centimeters of steel and not lots of other steel. At this level, there's actually what's called the upper belt. On the third bulkhead in, it's 12 inches. I don't know what that is in centimeters. Well, 30 end. some cent yeah. about 30 centimeters. Um, and yeah, and that tapers as it goes toward the keel. That's all protection for these engineering spaces. So follow, take whatever yeah. photos yeah. you want yeah. in yeah. here yeah. and then follow yeah. me into this yeah. space. Yeah. And then he say it is allowed, and this one do automatic. So the guns go like this, and then a half second later, is it's in position, bam. Just follow me this way. Computer, in that way. You see, these things are great, the boat is going to go on the ding dong. Structure, these guns can fire farther than the five inch guns. So they have to be able to see farther over the horizon. They gather the information, send it down through the barrel switches. This computer is called the Mark 8 Range Keeper. This was mainly for ship to ship. When they modernized the ship, they added the Mark 48 shore attack. And then this is the Mark 41 stable vertical. Um, inside is the gyroscope, the three triggers, all the thing, all everything is the same. Now, what you have to know is that. These computers are pretty accurate and they're they're pretty high, highly advanced. Um, it takes our 16 inch projectiles 91 seconds to reach its target 42, 43 kilometers away. 
these computers actually take into consideration the Coriolis effect or the rotation of mm. the Earth during that 91 second travel time. Mm. So does anybody want to shoot the guns? Yeah. Yes. Who go, oh, Brian, you want to go first? Sure. sure. Squeeze <laughs> this middle trigger. When that goes black, let it go. Squeeze hard.